Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Fire Chat Podcast. Today on the show, I have Ken Letourneau. Ken, say hi to everybody. Hey, welcome. Good morning. It's great to have you. And I heard you, you came out here all the way from Torrance. So thanks for thanks for driving. Really appreciate that. Hi. Uh, great opportunity. So thank you very much for inviting me, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, how long is that drive? Uh, it was two hours. Two hours. Two yes. hour drive. And, and I think that's awesome because I... You know, we've been doing, especially these real estate Wednesday kind of days where we've been doing two events here in the fire center, um, you know, is that we were hoping that people like you would come out, you know, that have to have that drive and have that commute would come out and kind of hang out for the day uh, versus, you know, doing one event on Wednesday and one event on Thursday and having to, you know, commute and everything like that. So I appreciate you coming out, man. Thank you. Um, Ken, give me, give me like the 30 second rundown of like who you are, what do you do? What's, uh, how long you been in real estate? Uh, well, I've been in real estate for 25 years. I was one of the success, success students of um, Carlton Cheats back in the 1990s. Okay. And um, I basically do tax lien and tax deed investing and tax redeemable tax deed investing. Cool. My full-time position. Awesome. Awesome. Now, for those of us that are you know brand new like me, what is a tax deed? Well, Basically, how it works is the government, everybody who has who owns real property has to pay property taxes here in the United States. And if you don't pay property taxes here, then the government will basically put a lien on the property. Mm. And then after so many years, then the government will um, sell the lien on the property to the general public or they will sell the, the property like here in the state of California. Hmm. Wait, but I, but I like... I own my I own my property. They can't take it from me, right? Well, <laughs> that's, a, that's that's a that's a tricky this question. Is America. Yeah, that's that's a tricky question. Okay, but the way the law is set up here is like you do own the property, okay, mm -hmm. but you do have to pay property taxes, mm -hmm. okay. And even though if your house is free and clear, you got no mortgage on it, no nothing. If you don't pay property taxes, yes, the government can take your property to pay the property taxes. Wow. wow. So you don't really, so you almost like don't even ever really own it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could, you could say that. I, I really don't yeah. get into that, but yeah. yeah, that's correct. Wow. Wow. So, all right. So the, you don't pay the man, they can take your, they can take your tax or take your property back. And for those of you that own property out there, you know, you have to pay your property taxes, right? Mm -hmm. um, twice a year. Yeah, usually. That's correct. That's correct. Um, and how long in the state of California uh, before, like that starts happening. Like what's, what's that process like before they can really like really start to take the house? Is it a couple of years or? Yeah. Yeah. So, so they give you a time. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not like, um, it's not like a mortgage. Like if you um, are late on a mortgage on a house, mm -hmm. okay. The bank can start to foreclosure very quickly. Yeah. So here in the gov here in the, in the state of California is if you're three years behind, if it's considered non owner occupied, mm -hmm. which is like um, vacant land, apartment buildings, commercial, um, or five years, if you're considered owner occupied, mm -hmm. that the government can start the process to actually um, have a tax deed auction in the state of California. Interesting. Five years. Five years. Okay. So, like, do they, you know, when they, like, how hard do they try and notify you? They just like send you a letter or? Yeah. Well, that's a good, that's a good question. So basically, they're sending bills to you every single year, okay, mm -hmm. that your, your property taxes are due and they're adding on those penalties. And they're adding on that interest also, okay? Then um, one year, usually about one year before, that's when they really start getting strong, you could say. They start sending registered letters yeah. to you. And there are times that I believe that the county will actually go to the property and finding out what's going on, especially for owner-occupied properties, you know, that might be free and clear. Maybe a, um, an older person might be living there at the property. So a lot mm -hmm. of times they'll send um, representatives also to the property. Gotcha. Now, what what happens if like you you don't live at the property, or you live out of state, or out of the like? Do they try and find you? Or well, yeah. So they're going to send a letter. So mm -hmm. they're going to send registered letters. So I tell people, I said it's extremely important that you make sure that your paperwork that you file with the tax collector mm -hmm. and the tax or the assessor's office is correct that your address is correct, that it's updated mm -hmm. if you move to different locations, because that's yeah. all they're going to go off yep. is whatever you file with them. They're not mm -hmm. going to do a skip tracing. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're not going to, it's not their job to track. You yeah. Down, they're not right? going to do that. They says, look, you know, you have to, you know, tell us the address of the property and put everything there. 
So then we can notify you by bills and everything um, when the when the taxes are due. And then mm -hmm. if you don't pay the property taxes, then um, you got some headaches going on. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So I mean, that's you know what and what. Why does you know like why like what do people lose their job or they you know there's all kinds of reasons people wouldn't pay their property taxes, right? Sometimes people just forget, right? Um, you know, I. I I've had this. I've gone back and forth because some of the some of the property. I, when I first started buying property, I had everything escrowed, uh, you know, so that they make you, you know, they make you pay the the property taxes in a, an escrow account, um, and then and then I switched them over, you know, and it wasn't bad until, you know, I mean, it's not it, it's not bad right now either, but it's it's different, you know. Now every every six months or so, I'm like. Oh man, that's a big bill coming up, <laughs> you know? So, um, I can see how people, you know, get behind, you know, even people that just have one house, you know, or don't, you know, don't do real estate investing or anything like that to just, you know, they fall behind. Right. Um, so like, so what's the opportunity there for investors? Well, well I mean, I, I think it's a great opportunity for investors and also a potential homeowner also mm -hmm. if they're looking to buy a house um, because in every state runs differently mm -hmm. and a lot of counties run differently. So okay. here in the state of California, when they have the auction here, you're going to actually be bidding to own the property here in the mm -hmm. state of California. So it's a, it's a tax deed auction in the state of California. But you can go right across the next next um, state, which is the state of Arizona, mm -hmm. and Arizona is a tax lien auction. Mm. And then in a tax lien auction, you're just buying the lien on the property. And if the person pays you back, you can get up to a 16% interest rate in the state uh -huh. of Arizona. Okay. You don't and get the property. You don't get the property, right. Now, you would get the property if they don't pay you for another three years. Okay. You have to like foreclose on them. Or? Right. So okay. you got to start foreclosure there. Okay. okay. And then they have the state of Texas, which is a little bit further down, and um, it's called redeemable tax deed. So you have a little bit more rights there in the state of Texas. A lot of times the counties will actually allow you to go in and start rehabbing the house, okay, and making sure that safety is there. And then if the, per if the owner pays the county back, well, you'll get your money back that you've um, pay for rehab, depending on the county. Gotcha. And you also get your um, interest, which is like a 25% penalty in the state of Texas. Okay. Wow. So every state um, works completely different and a lot of counties work completely different here in the United States. And it sounds like, I mean, which is, you know, we, we give, you know, we all give California crap for, you know, all the restrictive laws and, and, and taxes and all that. But it sounds like from what you're describing, California maybe has one of the most favorable, or at least in the list that we talked about, the short list of, of where you actually, after five, you own the property versus like having to go through more. Would, would that be a true statement or? Well, it varies, you know, because Cal remember when you're going to be bidding on a deed auction, you are going to pay a higher price. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, because it's coming with the house. Yeah. Coming with the house. Oh. Okay. So the competition is going to be much more fierce and much more competitive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but you'll own the property immediately. Compared to like, um, if you're willing to say, okay, I'm going to go to um, state of Florida or Arizona mm -hmm. or Illinois, and I'll put maybe a hundred dollars down and just wait. Yeah. And then if they don't pay, well, you've had to only pay maybe a thousand dollars and you could get a very good property that might be worth two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000. Now, yeah. when you, when, when you, let's, let's stick to California for right the second, mm -hmm. like when you you just have to pay the back taxes or you bid on whatever, like, obviously it's going to go to, a, if it's going to an auction, it's going to go to a bidding. So if they owe $10,000 in back taxes, it's probably more, you know, usually, um, let's say a hundred thousand dollars in back taxes. Um, you know, you're bidding, you know, what? 150, 200,000. Correct. Yeah. So uh, it's a bidding, it's a, it's a, they call it an open cry. You could mm -hmm. say, so whoever pays the highest amount at the auction, will win the will win the property. And it doesn't matter if that house is worth a hundred thousand dollars or if that house is worth two million dollars. Doesn't matter. You get the house. You get the house. You get the deed. You get the deed. Okay. okay. Now they don't give you a warranty deed. Okay. You're gonna get probably a, a treasurer's deed or a quick claim deed hmm. or um sheriff's deed, depending on the state and the county. Okay. Okay. 
And then from there, it's your responsibility to, you know, check to see which title companies can offer you the title insurance. That was or, be my next question. What, what about yeah. title insurance? <laughs> <laughs> so then from there, you, either you have to find out the right um, title company that will offer you the title insurance, okay. or you have to get to your quiet title action through an attorney. Okay. And are there title companies that are usually more like as first American, more friendly to this, or is it, you know, lawyers or? Yeah, there's only you know. a couple of title companies here in the mm -hmm. state of California that will actually take this type of risk. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they've done it for many years, so they know what um, what the county has to do, you know, mm -hmm. and making sure that, that they've um, done the proper audit and make sure notif notifications have been sent out properly. Yeah. Um, so there's a there's like a routine that uh, the certain title companies know exactly what should have been done. Gotcha. Okay. And are there any like? It is is at the county level, right? It's not city or, right. or local, right? Um, are there any counties that are a little like fast and loose with this stuff to kind of look out for? Or? Um, no, not really. I mean, every county has to do a procedure. Okay. So, um, and all the, most of all the counties here in California are online too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the auctions are online. So Good. there's no more, um, very few actually do in person. So the prices go even higher then. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's more people correct. can just sit yep. at their computer and bid. Yep. That's correct. Uh -huh. That's correct. Exactly right. You know? So that's the big, you know, I tell it's drawback. State, I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. the big drawback you have, okay, is that mm -hmm. you understand that you're going to have to be bidding online mm -hmm. and uh, you're going to have to send in a deposit. You're going to send in a non-refundable um, fee, yeah. okay, to get approved. And then you have to do your due diligence, you know, mm -hmm. you know, looking at the property, do your research and all that stuff. And you have to do that, I'm assuming, before the auction. You yes. can't, you don't have any time to do that after the auction. No, that's correct. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Just making sure. Yeah. Um, so like, is there, so what happens? Is there a, like a list that gets posted publicly or do yeah. you have to buy that list somewhere? Or? Yep. So most of the auctions are held on bid for assets. Okay. Bid for assets.com. Hmm. It's a third party platform. So is that just California assets or is that? Like all across the country? No, that's just for California we're talking okay. about right now. Okay. Bid for assets. Yeah. yeah. So bid for assets, they basically have their their auctions, the counties, and then um, they will put the list on usually 30 days before the auction. But they're going to list them the parcel number, APN mm -hmm. number. Okay. And sometimes they'll give you the address of the property. But I tell people, I said, you're not buying an address. You're buying a parcel number. Yeah. And if the address is connected to it, True. great. That's the key. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, cause it might not even have an address. <laughs> right. Exactly right. You know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Keep going. So, and then you, you're going to basically bid and then the auction will start at the opening um, taxes amount. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the taxes are usually the property taxes that were owed, the penalties that were charged, the interest that were charged, any legal fees, you know, the title search that's been done. Mm -hmm. All those fees are actually the starting point of the um, property or the auction for the property going to gotcha. sale. And then from there, as you're registered, it's going to be a auction on the internet. It could be one day. Mm -hmm. It could be three days wow. on the auction. And you're bidding and you're watching and watching and watching and, you know, till the, maybe the last five minutes and then everybody runs in yeah. and the like and price jumps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now do you get, do you like, is it like eBay where you can just set your, excuse me, set like your max, uh, like your max thing and it'll just like bid for you or yeah. do you have to like physically sit there and like. Keep yeah, no, you can, you can put your maximum bid that you would like and the computer will automatically bid the next bid and the next bid until you reach your maximum. Okay. Interesting. And then it okay. would not bid no more for you. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And um, that's cool. I didn't know that. And and is it, you know, typically like on some of these auction sites that I've seen, it's been a couple of years since I've gone on them. Um, you, you know, it'll, it'll say it's going up for auction and then like at the last minute it gets pulled or, um, I mean, maybe that was the foreclosure auction mm -hmm. that I was thinking of, but I don't know if I've ever done the, the actual tax deed one. Um, is that, is that a common thing too? Like where you're, you know, you're doing this, you're looking at this house, you're doing the research and you're ready to go. And then it's like the last minute it, they just pull it or. Yeah. I mean, it happens many, many, many times. Okay. So, um, you can do all the research and then when the day of the auction happens, the County, um, will basically send the new list 
to the bid for assets. And then bid mm -hmm. for assets will basically update it and saying, you know, open or closed. Mm -hmm. And then properties that you could be looking at, they'll be closed. Okay. And you would not be able to bid on the property because of, you know, the taxes have been paid. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Now, so, I mean, it sounds like, let's just off the top of my head, but it sounds like the more you know, like it, it and maybe what maybe you, you could share what your little bit of your strategy. I know you want to give all your secrets away, but like it seems like you'd be better to know like a, a specific niche or like maybe a, a specific market that you're after in these tax liens so that you don't have to spend, you know, if, if you live in Torrance, like you don't want to be like chasing stuff and and you know, San Diego or something where it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of effort and to go drive by and do all that. And then they pull it at the last second. You'd be more likely to know something that was right down the street from you, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it all varies. I always tell people, I said, the bigger the county, the more competition you're going to have. Mm -hmm. The smaller the county, the less competition you'll have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you as a tax sale investor have to realize that the properties that might be worth, say, a million dollars, okay, um, and they know that if the property goes to tax sale, the mortgages will be wiped out. The judgments will be wiped out. Okay. Um, everything will be wiped out except the local, um, code violations, you know, the mm -hmm. building, building violations or the weed abatements, those will basically stick. Really? Okay. But people don't realize that when you buy the tax sales here, that all those, um, bank loans are erased, you wow. know, from the um, property. I did not know that. Yeah. So, you know, I tell the people, you've got to do your due diligence to know where you want to invest. A lot of stuff you can do on the internet. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets close to the auction date, then maybe you want to take a trip out there, you know, yeah. for the day. Mm -hmm. um, because then you can see the properties are still there active yeah. and you haven't um, wasted your two hours or three hours of driving yeah, absolutely. to look absolutely. at it. So how, why wouldn't the... Uh, yeah, you know, that they would just wipes out the the mortgage and all that. Like, why, why wouldn't the bank just pay the taxes? And well, a couple of reasons why. You know, the, one of the big reasons is that you know sometimes banks are so bogged down with paperwork. Mm -hmm. And remember, the government, you know, um, only has to send notices to them. Okay, they don't have to send a representative to say Bank of America and say, "Excuse me, <laughs> you didn't pay your property taxes on this property, so it's mm -hmm. going to go to sale." You know. They send proper notices to the bank. And a lot of times it gets shuffled around and gets lost. Mm -hmm. And the last minute, the property is sold and lost. Okay. Wow. Or the condition of the property might be really bad. They don't want it. They don't want it. Yeah. Exactly right. Interesting. Yeah, because yeah. I know like, you know, your insurance lapses on a mortgage and they're, they're right in there with that, <laughs> you know, lender, a lender insurance mm -hmm. real quick. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm surprised they don't jump in there with the, some kind of, you know, lean against your property. I don't know, you know, that they don't pay it and, mm -hmm. and then send you the bill. Yeah. Kind it, of it, it happens. And especially to happen to remember back in the 2008, I think 2009, when we had the big um, crisis going on. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was the best time to buy because well, banks sure. were being, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but yeah. banks were being bought and sold all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, so they were, not they aware of any of They this. weren't they even were aware. Just, yeah. So the county would just send off the notice to the bank wow. that was on record. And then you find out that it was sold to another loan, was sent off to and they say, hey, that's not our responsibility. Mm -hmm. We sent it to whoever we have it on file. Okay. Yep. And so the bank's out of luck. So that was the best time to really um, um, capitalize yeah. on, on purchasing properties. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, you know, it's funny. I, I read... You know, around that time, maybe a couple of years later, was the first time I read Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I remember Kiyosaki talking about tax liens and tax deed sales. And and it's funny, I remember this was back in like 2011, 2012, something like that. Um, and I remember reading uh, reading about it, but I didn't really understand it. And I wasn't in real estate back then. So um, I especially didn't understand it. And now... Like, so, you know, so you're kind of jogging my memory on some of that stuff. And now it makes a lot more sense than it did, than it did back then. So, um, I mean, is it a, is, you know, where do you, or do you normally buy here in California or out of state or? Well, we've been, we've been purchasing a lot of out of state, you know, we purchased in um, Arizona and Tennessee and mm -hmm. Indiana, 
Um, and the reason why we just prefer the lean states, you know, um, and not the deed states really? so much, you know. Why is that? Just for the cost out? Or? Um, well, you give the opportunity to the homeowner to pay the property taxes. Gotcha. Okay. Um, when it goes to sale. And you can get a great interest rate. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you're just after the return, not necessarily the property. Right. So you can get a great return. And okay. then, you know, after the three-year period, okay, um, then you can foreclose. So a lot of the states, um, you are the only person who can foreclose on the property. So it doesn't have to go to a public bidding auction at mm. the very end. Okay. You know, but some states do mm-hmm. that it has to go to a public bidding auction. Okay. So um, everybody chooses, you know, we're, we're looking back here in the state of California um, um, for next year. So we'll start putting our little feet out here and uh, do our homework and do our due diligence and everything. Yeah. Um, but right now it, we've been very successful and it's, it's not that much of a, um, a risk. It's a very low risk. We might invest maybe 3000 or $4,000 to gotcha. invest the lien and then we can own a property for Interesting. that. Interesting. Um, so is there a, is there a, uh, thanks for that insight. Mm-hmm. That's, that's cool. I would, I would have thought everyone would, you know, everybody would just want the property, but I guess, you know, that makes sense that you're just looking for the return also. Um, the, uh, is there anything that's like, um, you know, I, maybe I'm thinking of foreclosure. I can't remember which one it is, but in California now, like they can, you know, if those people, if whoever loses the house, they can come back within a certain time period, uh, and pay it back and get the house back. I think that's foreclosures. Is yeah. there anything like that on tax liens? No. Well, no. See, in California, the way it works is the owner could legally file a lawsuit within one year one and year. say that he wasn't properly served. He didn't know about the, the law. He didn't know about um, the um, foreclosure or mm-hmm. the tax sale. Okay. Um, the lender could do that. Okay. Mm-hmm. But as long as the county has basically done the proper procedure, okay. Um, it's going to be hard, you know, because, you know, the judge is going to have to try to overrule it. But that one year thing does apply to tax sales as well? In California. In California. Yeah. Okay. Other other states, they're not as um, lenient, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, because in Arizona, basically, and give an example, is you, you actually have to um, personally serve, you have to hire an attorney. Mm-hmm. The attorney has to file, out, file notices. He has to do a lawsuit. He has to do much more, you know, than just send out letters um, yeah. than like here in the state of California does. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's much more due diligence that happens. So there's less chance that they can. Right. Exactly. Okay. So instead of the state of California deciding to do all that stuff, they just said, all right, well, if we screw up, you got a year to figure it out. Right. And right. and then maybe you could get it back. Right. And I, and I know, you know, other investors that do, for, you know, focus on foreclosures and stuff like that, they tend to just let the property sit for a year yeah. and just, you know, they're not going to go throw two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 into a property for the first year. They'll just wait a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then, so it's still, you know, it's, it's like one of those things like, Oh no, they could get the property back. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, well, just chill for a little bit, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, and then you're okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So right on, right on. All right. Well, that's, that's awesome information. Thank you. And we're going to come back to that in a second. I wanted to, um, I wanted to ask you, you know, kind of more on your background, um, you know, before you got into real estate, because this is the financial independence to real estate uh, podcast. So um, I like to ask people, like, was financial independence kind of uh, a driving factor for you that got you into real estate? Or was it the opposite? You got into real estate first? What did, uh, what's like kind of your goals, I guess? Or what did, you know? You... Well, I, I, I believe real, real estate is one of the best avenues, I believe, and the, and the least riskiest, you know, for investing your money. Okay. Because you have a, I'd agree. you have a, <laughs> <laughs> you have a tangent asset. Mm-hmm. You have something you can actually touch, you know, it could be land. It could be a house. It could be apartments, it could be condos, townhomes, however you want to do it. Okay. And it's not like in a, in a, in a second, your real estate's going to drop like the stock market. Mm-hmm. Okay. Stock market can go up in a second. It can go down in a second because of some news or some earnings or something some like that. executive had a scandal or. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So real estate's a little bit different story. Okay. Mm-hmm. 
Um, you can, if you want to buy and hold a property for a while, you can say, okay, hey, I'm going to buy and hold, put my money there. I'm going to own the property if I want to be the bank mm -hmm. and maybe lend money to the person and get a good interest rate um, and try to improve a community. And that's a really big thing that I like a lot very much that has helped us a lot is when we go to a lot of the towns mm -hmm. and we go in there and they're rehabbing them, okay? And we maybe go to sometimes smaller towns. Yeah. The um, local officials, the um, city council, the mayors, or the um, co the um, building officials and code enforcers are thrilled that you're actually improving the neighborhood, okay? <laughs> it's funny, I get the opposite sometimes, but yeah. I, I, I like when it's like that. Yeah. yeah, so they're they're very happy that you're going in there and you're improving the neighborhood. You're fixing everything up. You're getting somebody who's going to be living at the property rather than having a- um, Eyesore. A, yeah. Eyesore, mm -hmm. basically. So that's been very, um, very positive for us that we've noticed a lot, that we, we enjoy very much, okay? Mm -hmm. And we do everything the right way. I mean, it's like we go there. We first thing before we do is we go to the county or we go to the city. And say what what permits do we need mm -hmm. first? Okay, and um, they're kind of pleasantly shocked from us and say, "Yo, you're coming to us before we actually come to you and ask for <laughs> permits." <laughs> I say, "Yeah, we try to do that first, so then we know what the rules are." Okay, yeah. and then we pull the proper permits that's required, mm -hmm. and then we meet the inspectors at the property make sure that they know that we know what we're doing, you know, with our contractors, um, that they're, they're, um, they're doing the proper work and job. Mm. And so that's one thing that I, I believe that makes us stand out compared to, um, another, other investors mm -hmm. that they'll go in and they'll put the curtains on the windows and, uh, start ripping everything out inside. Yeah. And then they want to know why the, they get a stop order from the local officials, yeah. you know, on that. So we try to do everything the right way and then help the community um, also. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you're right. I mean, I'm sure they're a lot more responsive to, you know, have you ever had that come back and, and bite you as far as like, you know, they, they, you know, want you to do way more than you were anticipating or... Um, yeah, sometimes, sometimes we have, you know what I mean? It hasn't happened in, in again, every state... Is different, you know. California, oh, yeah. you know, California is a very um, tough one, you could say, yep. to work with the um, sometimes the officials, mm -hmm. you know, um, certain rules and guidelines and so on that they would want, and then you go to a different state and you say, well, you know, I plan on doing this. Do I need any um, building permits? They said, no, you don't need any building. I said, oh, really? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, my dad just um, my dad's doing a. Uh, a rehab up in up in Lewistown, Montana. Okay. And uh, you know, he bought the property. I mean, this thing's a wreck. Uh, but he's gotta he's gotta add a header in this in the roof. He's gotta redo the roof. He's gotta redo the electrical. Mm -hmm. Um he called the he called the city. They sent the building planner out there or the inspector out there um two or three hours later and met him on the property. He said, Yeah, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you know, it's three hundred dollars for a permit. Right. There you go. Right. Have fun. Right. <laughs> my right. dad, right. my dad being from California and a general contractor in California, uh, was just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was shocked. He was yeah. like, he called me up. He's like, you won't believe it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, and I think, so. I think that's a, I think the problem that we have is sometimes there's too much regulation mm -hmm. that happens. Okay. And when you have too much regulation, okay. It's not good overall. Yeah, true. For, for well, us. you know, it's a pendulum, right? It swings. You know, it seems seems to be in California, at least swinging back to reality a little bit. You know, with the ADU laws coming down, and you know whether you love or hate Newsom for whatever reason. Um, you know, it seems like on the on the building side of things, uh, maybe not in the landlord side of things, but on the building side of things, that you know they are really looking at eliminating some of this red tape. Um, you know, I know it's a lot of it's ADU geared at the moment, but um, it seems to be having an effect on, you know, local local ordinances and, and stuff like that. You know, the, the building and planning divisions where it's like, come on, like we're trying, you know, you, you, when you live here too. You know how like, you know, the housing problem we're having, like make it a little bit easier, mm -hmm. you know, to provide some housing. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's not perfect, but it's definitely harder than Montana, you know, yeah. but. 
you know, enough Californians moved to Montana. Don't worry. They'll, they'll be just like us soon enough. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, so where, how many, like, how many states have you done projects in? Well, we've done a lot of projects in, um, like I said, we've done it in Tennessee, Arizona. We've done a lot here in the state of California. We've done it in um, the state of Michigan also. We've done a lot of liens in other states also. Mm-hmm. We've done it in, you know, Florida, Nebraska. Wow. And um, um, what else? A couple. Um, state of Maine. We did something in the state of Maine. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we're, we know how to work it in every single state in the nation. We know how it works. Okay. Cool. Um, but there's certain states that we prefer. I was just going to ask you, what was, what's your favorite? <laughs> well, I, I like Arizona because, mm-hmm. I'm, of course, I'm here in California, so I can just drive to Arizona. Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's one big reason I, I do like there. Okay. Um, look into some other states too. Um, but rather than jumping in a plane that, you know, flying six hours, eight hours, and then you're... Um, then you have to wait and maybe connection and all these other factors and then getting a rental car and um, all these other facts too. I forgot I had a mic here. <laughs> <laughs> so that has been very, very um, beneficial um, for us because we can just drive. And then here in California, basically the same situation, okay, is it's a deed state. Um, we're doing certain avenues um, to look at mm-hmm here in the state of California. We, because I flipped before, before I did the tax sales, okay? Yeah. All I was doing here in the state of California is buying a property, fixing it up and selling it, buying it, fixing up and selling it, yep. okay? Um, I wish I had kept more, but I did not, okay? Likewise. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> um, flipper eventually. Said yeah. <laughs> so, but it, it was, it was a routine. It was a job. You know, so I know how to do, you know, when we did the flipping and everything here, okay? Had some good contractors and, you know, we've learned the hard way that we've had some bad contractors mm-hmm. too, you know, in, in other states, okay? Yeah. So um, time, time takes time, you could say, how it works. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So do you still flip? We, we flip our properties mainly when we acquire them at the tax sales, Okay. okay? So we'll either rehab them or we'll wholesale them, which is basically just, you know, buying the property, then cleaning it out and then putting it back on the market and yeah. selling it to a local investor. Mm-hmm. Or we're going to um, keep them as rentals now, okay? Um, so that's, that's what we're doing. So it's the same way, you know, um, it's just that we're just buying them from the tax sales now. That's it. Nice. Okay. Right. So you don't do any other marketing or nope, no calling, texting, nope, nope, no sub- per click. Nope. No, <laughs> I don't do no subject to, I don't do any driving around for dollars. I don't mm-hmm. do any knocking on doors. I don't do any cold calling. I don't do any of that stuff. Just tax liens. Just tax liens or tax, or tax deeds. Yeah. yeah. Cool. That's it. And, and how many, like, uh, you know, how many do you acquire, like properties you go through a year? Well, um, liens right now, we probably acquire about four to 500 liens a year. Wow. Okay. Damn. Um, yeah. And, nice. the, and the properties, okay. <laughs> um, the, the properties, it looks like um, this past year, we acquired probably about 15 properties. Okay. Uh, this year, probably it looks like we'll probably acquire maybe 25, 30 properties, Excellent. you know, plus or minus. Excellent. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and is it just you or do you have a team company? Yeah. So we have, we have contractors, you know, that we hire that, okay. um, that do a lot of our work and then, um, but as know, far as on the investor side, like, does it, the, the people that are running the company? Yeah. Just it, myself. It's just yourself. Yeah. Okay. Myself. Basically. Yeah. So 20, 25, you know, deals is keep, keeping you yeah. Plenty busy. It keeps him busy. You know, we'll be heading yeah. to Arizona, you know, coming up in the next couple of days and getting ready for the auction there. So got to look at some of the properties that are the three years have come up now mm-hmm. and they did not pay the property taxes. So I want to make sure the house is still there. Yep. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> that's the important still part. Yep. And then from there, pass it on to my attorney mm-hmm. and then the attorney will handle it from there. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I spent. I actually lived in Phoenix for for uh, eight years. Okay. Um, jumped around all through Chandler and mm-hmm. you know Mesa, North Phoenix, Glendale. Mm-hmm. You know all yep. that stuff. So yep. um, I've always wanted to kind of get 
back to, and you know, cause I didn't, I wasn't an investor back then. I didn't, I was just a partier, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so, uh, but I, I thought it was always a great place to, I mean, looking at all those houses that I lived in or apartments, I mean, they've all doubled, tripled, mm-hmm. um, you know, some of them more, uh, over the years. So I would love to get back in Arizona and, and actually invest out there. Um, you know, so if you're ever looking for somebody to do some stuff out in Arizona with, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm done. No problem. And I, um, and I do say California, there's opportunities here in California mm-hmm. when you, when you do the deed auction. Okay. Yeah. You know, you just have to look where you want to buy. Yep. That's all it is. Do your homework yeah. and you can get some, you get great deals, probably hundred to 150 grand below the market at the tax sales wow. in California. Wow. Okay. You just got to do your homework. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you, and like we said earlier, you know, the more you know about that market, the faster you can, more confidently you can pull that trigger, right? Correct. Um, you know, if it's somewhere new or you're trying to buy some mansion in, you know, Beverly Hills or something, then I don't know. Although I did, um, I'm pretty sure my a friend of mine, that's where he got the, he got a, you know, a mansion he picked up for $17 million in uh, Corona Del Mar on the auction. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, he put like a hundred, he put like, I think he said like about 300,000 into it and he's turning around and selling it for, um, 20 or he's putting on the market for 37. <laughs> 37. He's, yeah. he's hoping for, you know, he'll take 27 and he'll be happy. <laughs> I was like, yeah, $10 million payday. I'd, I'd be okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, those will come up every day, I'm sure, you know, or, you know, but what's the, what's the, uh, like kind of, do you have a buy box as far as the amount you, you'll you'll play in or is it just anything that makes sense or? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it all varies. Like, you know, so if I'm going to do in California, basically, um, you know, we'll, we'll probably do, um, more in the, um, Riverside, you know, County area, San Bernardino County area, uh, Kern County area, um, San Diego or Imperial County, mm-hmm. probably not so much in LA County. Okay. Um, but we'll look in there and, you know, as long as we are, purchasing the property at the, you know, 100 to 150 or more below the retail price, then we're okay. But even if it was a couple million dollars or? Oh yeah. No, we, we kind of stay with probably about maybe below 400, $500,000. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same, same. You know, we do about the same thing. We, anything over that, we're, we start getting a little, eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, the numbers get big quick. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know, exactly. Finishes and yeah. Yeah. Know, all those, all those. So it's just, it's just that, you know, um, we, we see where our niche is and we see where our success is. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's where we stay with Good. ourselves. Good. Yeah. You stay in your lane. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Um, a lot of people started going for the bigger and better, myself included, you know, when I uh, tried to go into Airbnbs and learned quickly that that wasn't, wasn't for me, but what's your, um, what's your, what was your favorite, like, what's your favorite flip that you ever did? Um, probably here in California, you know, we had a per- uh, property that we had acquired um, a few years ago that was a uh, city of Compton and it was in the horse property location. And, um, and this was through postcards that we had sent out to Mm -hmm. out of state owners and they had, and this is before we had got into the tax sales, Mm -hmm. you know, a number of years ago. And, um, the, um, gentleman was in bad health. So he wanted to sell the property and the people who were living there weren't paying of course. And so we were able to acquire that property and he owned a vacant lot next door to it too in Mm -hmm. Compton that could be developed too. So we were able to acquire those properties um, directly. So there was no realtor involved or nothing. We bought it directly, you know, buyer and seller, did the title insurance and the escrow, and we closed on those properties. And uh, those were very rewarding, very rewarding. Good. On those. Good, good. Um, so, all right. So we covered we covered tax liens, Just, you know, a little bit of your background there. Um, I got – I. I I noticed your shirt. I love it. What does it say? Oh, okay. it's called unemployable. So where did you get that shirt? Um, I actually, unemployable. yeah, <laughs> actually, actually a long time ago, I, I went to this, uh, uh, seminar, I guess it was a Ron, Ron LeGrant seminar. Oh yeah. Yeah. What? Long, long time ago, you know, and he had a, um, they had a shirt there I bought 
it wasn't this one. I made more of, but um, <laughs> it was it was basically the same. Mm -hmm. So I bought that shirt. I said, oh, and people always comment on it when they see it, and they said that's a good shirt. I like it. Yeah, you know. So it catches people's attention, um, which is really what I want to do. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, well, that's one of the I mean, we again, again all the club shirts we made. Um, you know, with the logo first of all, with the with the newer the updated logo, and then um, we're doing some of the uh, some of the uh, some of those like you know that was one of them. Um, you know, we're just trying to you know investor like you're like big you know big bold like things that, other than just a logo. Mm -hmm. um, but I always love that word like why what makes you unemployable? Well, people always need a place to live. Mm -hmm. Okay, and as a investor, when you buy properties and you are providing housing to people, mm -hmm. okay? And as long as the, you know, you find the right type of um, people to come into your property mm -hmm. and they pay you your, um, the, the rent, or if you're the bank, mm -hmm. you know, the, the monthly note to you, um, you'll always get a paycheck coming in every single month. Mm -hmm. So you're really not gonna be, um, you're always gonna be employed or you can't be unemployed yeah. at gotcha. all, okay? Gotcha. So that's why it is good. Good. Yeah. I always, I always thought of that as like, I, I couldn't work for anybody else. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. That could be another reason too. <laughs> you know, uh, you, you do it for yourself long enough. It's hard, it's hard to, hard to take orders, yeah. you know? So, um, so aside from, from real estate, Ken, like what, uh, you know, in investing and all that, like, what do you, what do you do for fun? Like what excites you outside of real estate? Um, well, I mean, I had my, one of my big dreams, which is what I just passed about a year ago. So I was able to achieve my black belt in, um, in karate. Oh, cool. Okay. So that was a, a seven year, um, journey. Okay. Nice. So that was very an instrumental, you know, to me, you know, that I really wanted to, to say, okay, I, 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 er awesome. I earned it. <laughs> nobody, nobody gave it to me at all. Okay. Which style? Um, I have Kempo. Okay. Yeah. So I do, I do Kempo. It's down in Lakewood because my office is in Bellflower. Mm. So they have a number of offices and I was one of his, one of the first students when they opened up the other location in Lakewood. So I had started right when they opened up there. I mean, they had like seven different locations. So this was a new location they opened up and I had first started with them and I was going there, you know, two, three times a week you know, mostly in the evening. And I like also, I like to, um, I walk every morning mm -hmm. too. So that's enjoyable. And then I do my social media. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of, um, you know, I do a lot of posts on Facebook, TikTok. Um, we're on um, Instagram, we're on YouTube. So I have like probably well over 100,000 followers who um, who follow us. Awesome. So that's enjoyable. What's your, uh, what's your, your, what is it, avatar alias? Uh, we're username. known, yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. So people know us as the tax sale master, tax sale master, yeah, or TT, at, yeah, TTSM, TTSM. Yeah, okay. is yep. that on Instagram, TikTok? Yep, all that stuff. Yep, that's yeah. correct. Cool. That's great. I like, I like that you do karate. That's cool. I, I did, um, I did it as a kid. I got really, really into it, and and then kind of like, I didn't hit a black belt, but I, I won this like really, I got like first place this big old trophy at this um, tournament one time, and. It's like I peaked too soon, like in it, and then I lost, lost interest in it. Um, but I've always wanted to get back into it. Um, you know, my stepdad Evan, you know Evan, yep. he's around the club a lot. Uh, you know, he um, he's got his black belt. Okay. So he at one time he was going to buy a karate studio. Oh. Um, this is years and years ago. Okay. You know. Um, but yeah, he, he probably you probably hear him talk about it sometime. But you know, you just bring it up. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it'd be pretty interesting. Um, so, and you walk and, and do all that stuff. That's cool. That's cool, man. I'm glad you stay active. That's, yep. you know, it's important. So I know I need to get back in there. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, we bought the fire center, you know, a year ago and, um, basically I moved, I stopped, it's funny. I stopped going to the gym. Uh, I moved out of a house that had like three staircases to get up to the thing and moved into one that you just walk straight in. Um, and I, and I was bowling like, you know, I was probably bowling like 20, 30 games a week. Oh, easily. Wow, okay. And so all that like stopped okay. in January, February when we bought this place. Mm -hmm. And I, I you see why. <laughs> it's like the reverse compound yeah. effect. <laughs> but, but it's come a long way. I mean, the, the location yeah. here is very good. You know, I, com I commend you. you and I congratulate you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's uh, it was a lot of work. Um, but it's it's nice that it's done, yeah. you know, to try and just let it 
kind of do its thing for a little while and yep. you know get some good speakers get some good uh events going and you know i'm happy i'm happy so um let's see so uh i wanted to kind of bring it back to the the tax lien um like for somebody that is let's say somebody that's brand new um I'm going to ask you two, two different questions, one for brand new and one for like an experience. Some, you know, so, but for people that are brand new and they wanted to get into this stuff, maybe they're, they excite them or they're like, Oh, you know, online I can bid like, you know, aside from just going on the website, like, is there a book you'd recommend or somebody that is you know, follow somebody like what, what, what would you tell a beginner that wanted to get into this? I always tell people a couple of things. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that you can watch about, tax lien and tax deed investing, okay? Um, but number one thing you have to really know is how is your capital, mm. okay? That's a good point. That's the, that's the big key because if, you, if you're, if and you'd be honest, maybe if, if you have only $100 in capital and you don't know somebody who might have larger amounts, well, you're not going to do a deed state. You're not going to do California. Yeah. All right? Um, and why? Because you're not just going to go down to the bank and get 150 grand loan and yeah. Well, you know, because remember, <laughs> yeah. So right? you got to pay cash at the mm -hmm. auction, okay? So when you're bidding at a deed auction, you are going to pay cash when you win. So yeah. if you're capital, how long do you have to pay that? 24 hours. Wow. Okay. Okay. So you got to move quick. You got to move quick. You, know, or you got to have a friend really right. ready to write that check. Yeah. Okay. So, so capital is a good one. Capital is very point. very important that you really have to know. And then you really have to know what state do you really want to um, invest in? Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of investors that you'll talk to. They says, you know, if I'm in California, that's it. I don't want to go anywhere else. I only want to do California. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to decide, okay, where do I want to invest? Maybe which county? I always ask people too. I says, you know, if you're in California, okay. Um, where's Lake County? Okay. I always ask people that and people say, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sacramento maybe. <laughs> right. Yeah. So <laughs> correct. It's up North, you know? So I said, if you want to invest in California, that's one word. You tell me you want to invest in California. Mm -hmm. That means all of California. Okay. Maybe you're telling me you only want to invest in Riverside County mm -hmm. or you want to only invest in Los Angeles County. Or which are still you, huge counties. <laughs> right, which are still huge counties, okay? Yeah. So, or, you know, if you want to invest in Riverside County, there's um, City of Bly, okay, which is close to the border, mm -hmm. but it's still Riverside County, mm -hmm. all right? Or is it going to be in the city of Riverside you're going to invest in? Mm -hmm. We have to know all that, okay? That's the key I try to tell people is you really have to know where – and the capital you have, you want to start your business. Yeah. So where at and how much you got. Correct. And if you don't have a lot, uh, then start a just, lean. You start with liens start or with liens. or find somebody that's you know, hey, if I find you a property, correct. You know, bring it to me and correct. We'll, we'll we'll you know, and then all right. So all right, cool. So that's for the newbies. What about for maybe experienced investors that you know are just maybe some other deal source deal leads or funnels are dried up. Mm -hmm. You know, they're looking for a new. Uh, a new funnel. Yeah, very easily. If you do California, I mean, there's, there's what I don't, I can't remember how many counties there are in California, but you will find easily probably in, in the next six months, if you focus on only California only, mm -hmm. you will have minimum 10 deals, really? 10 good deals. If you focus on the state of California only, yeah. I'm not talking about only focusing on Riverside County, <laughs> okay, or San Bernardino. Yep. I'm saying California, mm -hmm. okay? And that means you have to start now learning other counties, mm -hmm. learning other cities, and doing your research about what the values of the properties are, okay, in that particular city. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so on. And so when these, these big old lists of APN numbers come out, mm -hmm. does it at least say, like, which city it's in, or is it just... Straight APNs. Sometimes it's just straight APNs and sometimes they are not. But then if you are, if you have the right data, okay, so I'll, I'll give a very big tip for a seasons investor. I subscribe to uh, tax sale resources, hmm. okay? So then 30 days before, 
um, I'll pay a fee of every month. And then within five minutes, I have the, all the addresses. Oh, so they run it through everything and just right. give you the important stuff. Right. So okay. I just pull all, if I just want single family houses or if I just want apartments, or if I want land like worth maybe $100,000 and higher, mm -hmm. I just click a button and it gives me all the data. Interesting. Okay. So then I know which parcel numbers they are. Mm -hmm. and then I can just do my research or you can hire somebody to do the research from you, you yeah, know? Absolutely. And then you're, you're done in that whole county in probably less than 30 minutes. Nice. You know? Pro tip. I yeah. like that. I like that. So just there's services out there that they'll, right. they'll kind of aggregate the data for you a little bit instead of just giving you the APN list that the county gives. That's correct. And, um, but just, you know, I mean, that, that, that makes sense. There's, you know, property radar, property, like that does that, you know, um, you know, just in general. So right. that wouldn't, wouldn't shock me. That's cool. Right. Um, all right. And then what, you know, we only got a couple minutes here. So, what um, I know you you said you have uh, this this Instagram and TikTok presence and stuff in a company. So do you do what does your company do? Does it help people or do you, is there a service yeah. you offer? Or what, what is yeah. It? So if people are interested of learning the tax sales, tax lien, tax deed, and tax um, redeemable tax deed, they can go to our website, which is uh, taxsalesevent.com. Okay? okay. Again, taxsalesevent.com. They can register. We do a free webinar. Okay. okay. Every single um, week. And sometimes we're doing two or three times a week, you know, to give people the education mm -hmm. about the tax sales. Okay. And then also, you know, you follow us on Instagram, we're on YouTube, we're on TikTok, we're on Facebook. Okay. Cool. And um, we post two or three videos every single day. Wow. Okay. Um, we got thousands of videos out there that we post mostly when I'm doing my walking in the morning. I do my little one minute short video, but it um, it's a way I can get my walking done and then I'm able to post for education too for people. Awesome. On that. Yep. Awesome. Sounds like a great resource. So if, uh, if you're looking for more information, check out the website. What was it again? Uh, TaxSalesEvent.com. TaxSalesEvent.com. Yep. All right. Okay. Well, sounds good, Ken. A lot of great info. I appreciate you coming on the show. Okay. Um, anything else you wanted to touch on or? No, I think, and I do, I want to thank you very much for the opportunity. Absolutely. Okay. For um, giving me the uh, chance to um, hopefully um, share the knowledge to people. I always tell people here, my opinion, 95% of all people don't know tax sales. Yeah, okay? I agree. Yeah. And it's a very good avenue to get into because one, you are, um, I always tell people the funny part is that one, I like working for the government, okay? Not many people do, okay? But my business is because I'm actually buying the tax liens, getting a great interest rate, or buying the properties. Yeah. So I love working for the tax collector mm -hmm. or the treasurer, okay? Because I'm on the opposite side, you know? So I'm able to get a great return on yeah. interest. By helping the state out there. Yeah. Right. And gotcha. also getting the property possibly too. Very cool. Yep. Very cool. Well, again, uh, you know, if you want to check Ken out and you'll go to his website um, and it's been great having you on the show. I learned a lot. Um, I've, I've always been interested in it, but uh, never really had, you know, anybody that had done it to dive into with. So I really appreciate you being on there and being open about the information. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, just uh, again on the website. And then what was your Instagram again? One more time. Um, we're under the, the tax sale master. The tax sale master. Yeah. Sounds good. Yep. All right, Ken. Well, thanks for being on the show. I appreciate having you. Okay. For those of you listening, this has been the Fire Chat Podcast with, uh, again, my name's Rich Rice, the host. And you can check us out at firechatpodcast.com. You can also check out the club, Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club at ieric.org. We do multiple events a week, uh, mostly on Wednesday. do two events. And if you want to come make a deal with us, exchangers every Wednesday, 12 to 2. We're about to go to that right now. So... Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Appreciate you.